for Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Today, the cast for the new animated reboot of Everybody Hates Chris was just announced and it looks like Terry Crews and Tashina Arnold and Chris Rock will all be returning for the new series titled, Everybody Still Hates Chris. You know why we're so happy? <laughs> Tell them what. Everybody Still Hates Chris was announced today. The show that we did is now animated. animated. What? <laughs> it's be so much fun. Let's dance. Oh, oh, oh. Several voice actors were announced as the kids Chris, Drew, and Tanya, causing some to wonder why the original actors aren't involved. Now, Cruz and Arnold will be playing Chris's parents, Julius and Rochelle, while Rock is coming back as the producer and narrator. Now, reboots are nothing new in this day and age. With this new show, there seems to be a little bit of hesitation, especially with how the Good Times animated reboot turned out. And of course, we can't forget Friday, the animated series that came out a while back. Joining me is our very own Danielle Miller and special guest, B Tuck, to talk about this topic a little bit further. I wanna dive into this. Danielle, I'm gonna come to you first because we talked about when Good Times came out and people weren't happy about it. Then it came out and people were still not happy. When you see that there's gonna be a reboot of, and it's called Everybody Still Hates Chris, what's your reaction to it and are you excited? Okay, 10, 10 to them for the title. <laughs> um, 10, 10 to them, but also to, I'm gonna lie, I don't really care for it. The, the show itself, I watched here and there because of the characters that were on it. And I like, you know, Tanisha a lot from Martin days. Um, but other than that, I just never could have really got into Everybody Hates Chris. It was sort of too, I don't know. I can't describe it for me. I just never got into it. Sheesh, then you're a hard take, b took. Let me come yeah. in. I get what was her childhood like? I know. I was about to say my own. What kind of childhood did you have? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't get into it. I'm very sorry. Like, yeah. Carrie Crew's character was funny. But other than that, I, 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 I barely laughed. Maybe I'm just hard to make laugh. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Bro. I love it. I ain't gonna lie. I love it. I really appreciate them showing highlights to the old shows that we watched back in the day. And I personally, I would like to see it from a point where they're in college. Yeah. That would be good. You know what I'm saying? If they was in college. But we're gonna see when it comes out, what the writers are doing, the cast, and we're gonna see how it comes out. But hopefully it's great. Yeah, I, I'm excited for it as well. Um, I, I did watch it. I still watch it to this day. It's still funny when I go back and watch it. And I also love that even though it's not them getting older, I think it gives them a chance to grow the animated series because uh -huh. I think the original show only got 88 episodes. So they just missed being syndicated. So now we have opportunities to see that grow. And he's saying that this is like you get to see another side of okay. his childhood. So I think we'll still get fresh you know, things that are happening and just a fresh outlook on Everybody Hates Chris. But I'm excited. And I think the new generation will be able to, you know, bring them into mm -hmm. what we grew up on. Like you said before, I just hope it's not the same thing as the good times. Like, I like the good times because the character is involved and the writers that's involved. But it's like some things don't need to be brought back. I agree. Some things don't need to be brought back. Now, Danielle, let me ask you this, because you remember we, we recently just talked about Will Smith was going on his press runs for uh, Bad Boys 4, and then we heard Stephen A. Smith talk about it, and I want to quote one of his lines. He said, he said um, Chris Rock will never heal from this. Chris Rock will never heal. But here we are seeing Chris Rock still being able to work. Obviously, he had his special as well. So he's showing he's moving on. Do you think this will bury the hatchet of people wanting to hear about the slap? Do you think this is like end all be all, we're done? Or do you think people are going to still be asking for Chris to comment as he goes, if he goes on a press run for this? I think people would still have the urge to ask him. Um, reason being because he was on the other end of the slap. And also reason being, it all depends on their team too. Crook and Will's team might have told them don't ask him, but no slap. It could be that as well. But I think this, the, this slap didn't happen backstage. It happened on the Oscar stage. So it's sort of like written in history. It's a, and it's, it's an historical moment for the Oscars. So it is something that somebody will attempt to ask him about. I personally just don't want to hear about it no more for the next 10 years. Like maybe like further on down the road, but Will already said his piece. Chris already did the comedy special on it and, and said what he had to say. Just leave them alone. Let them make their money. Let me hear about this 10, 15 years when my kids want to know, well, what happened on the Oscar stage? Yeah. 
as a maturing, grown African American male, I would never bring that up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in the back of my mind, I know you got slapped at the Oscars, boy. And I think that's how, that's how it's gonna be with everybody else. Like, man, we're not gonna bring it up. Yeah. But, but you, boy. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> if it would have happened to you, what would you have done? I mean, I I don't know. I pray I could hold my poise as well as, I don't know if I would be able to hold it. But it, it, that's the thing, right? So many people were responding so quick to how they would react, but you don't know because it's so much. Like I, Chris has so much to lose being in front of that audience. Like it's just so much I'm sure that's rushing through your mind. So, but for me, I have no idea. I would have played dead. I would have been on that Oscar stage. They would have had to get the card out. Will would have had to cash a check. He would have to write a check right then before I got up. You just slap me. You gonna, you gonna pay me? Just lay down like a little body, like yeah, little y'all trace. Have, man. Y'all gonna have to trace me, get some tape. The Oscars would have been over. Then yeah, what 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 do you think you would have done? I would have done what Chris did, and that was continue on with the show because this is my dollar. We talking about this is my money, right? But after the show, I know where you live. Like I know where you live. Chris. So whatever happens after the show, that's like we can take it to the street. But on that on that Oscar stage, for the sake of my paycheck and for the sake of being a good example in front of people, you know, I was I was gonna carry on with the show like Chris, but after the show, big man, we go knock and buck. I ain't gonna lie. Then you know, they say the nicest people are the ones you have to watch out for. The way that you say I know where you lived and the way you looked at me just now, I, I like my heart dropped immediately. So I believe she didn't pull it up on somebody before. No, for sure. I, I believe it too. Now, as we mentioned, there's been a, you know, this isn't new. We see things, you know, reboot. We see some things go into animated series. So let me come to you. Are there any shows that you would want to see animated that you think could, could hold up and still do well as an animation? Give you like five. I'm going to be like five. seven. Okay. I got Martin. Oh, I'm, okay. The Parkers. Friday with Mike Epps. Baps. Men in Black, Rush Hour, Nutty Professor. Okay, you know they tried Friday. They, yeah. they did try Friday. It didn't look as well, but yeah. I would be interested to see it. It was like the T-Move version. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like up to date. This was definitely T-Move because <laughs> we got to get up to date, man. We in, uh, what's it, 6K now? We in yeah. 7K? Right. We have the 10Ks. That was like pixels. So yeah, man. Yeah, and, I, and my favorite one on there was definitely Martin, Martin, especially because we, you know, just seeing some of those characters pass away and no longer be like, and just it, anytime it's like that, right? Like being able to kind of keep them alive with the animated series, keep that character alive. Bebe's kids, they could bring back Bebe's kids. We still got uh, what's the dude name? Fat Phase on Lie. We still got Phase on Love. He did the voice of Robin Harris. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Neil, what about you? Are there any shows that you would want, that you would actually be excited about? Because I know you said you're not excited about this one because we have to pray about your childhood. But, you know, are, are there any shows that you grew up on that you would want to see animated? No way. I would not like to see any one of them animated. I'm old school. Like, I'm so nostalgic. My number one rapper is still Tupac. Like, he's still number one in my book. So for me, I think you should leave them just as they, as they is. A lot of them don't even need reboots. Now, if I'm talking about like bringing something back, I would say if it was already animated, like Rugrats, that was mentioned earlier. Like, I would love to see Rugrats again. Um, maybe the progression of the babies maybe working. I know. Or we could go back to all grown up. I don't know. But I don't want to see none of them shows animated. Like, leave them just how they is. Some of them I don't even want to see rebooted. Like, just let yeah. me watch them on TV and enjoy the nostalgia of it. Like Heart Revoke. <laughs> Bito said your car has been revoked. Danielle, you know, there are a lot of times I'd be like, yes, Danielle, I am with you. I'm standing with you. Today, I I love your backdrop and you, and you look great. <laughs> Thank you. We can't we can't agree on everything. And I'll say you're right. But I'll say this. I enjoy the reboot of the Fresh Prince, right? I enjoy Bel Air. I do okay. enjoy it. But there is a there's an aspect of it I do not enjoy. And Will, if you're listening, you know, and that aspect of it is Uncle Phil. Like, I love the I love the guy that's playing Uncle Phil, but in the original Fresh Prince, Uncle Phil, like there were some scenes I saw the way Carlton spoke to Uncle Phil. And if it was the original Uncle Phil, like he would have gotten bodied inside that room. But it didn't happen in this one. So, I'm But, but 
but also too, even when you think um, to, oh my gosh, and I should know his name, uh, the guy who played the butler, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey was completely different in the reboot. Yeah. Jeffrey in the reboot was like this undercut. First, I mean, he was a very attractive man, but even just his his whole persona was different. So I think that was the purpose was to give every character. It was a reboot, but with a twist. Yeah, but they make Uncle Phil light. I like that one. They make him a little light. I like that one. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, one uh, there there are a lot of shows that I think that would be cool animated. Before we head out, um, I think there's just one show that I do want to bring up because Father's Day just passed. First and foremost, Happy Father's Day to you, B Tug. We'll give a round of applause. We celebrating our week. We Come gonna on. we gonna take this to a week thing. Bump of Sunday. I'm yeah. gonna do y'all like y'all do y'all birthday. Come on. It's Father's Month. Yes. It's the whole month. Honestly, I like it because when I went in the store, it was so difficult for me to find a Happy Father's Day balloon. They already had like Fourth of July stuff out. And I'm just like, mm. Mother's Day, you see everything. Yeah. But Father's Day, it's like you hardly see anything. So I want to take the time to shout out Carl Jones. We talked about him a couple times. We know him from Boondogs. Um, he does a lot of great animated shows. He actually put out a um, animated series in partnership with Walmart dedicated to black fathers. And it's called The League of Black. Um, uh, excuse me, the League of Black and Unlimited Dads. So mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. I would definitely recommend people going to watch that. You can actually go on YouTube and type that in, the League of Black and Unlimited Dads. It was actually really, really good. So shout out to Carl Jones and happy Father's Day to him as well. Speaking of fathers, back to you. Yeah. June 22nd, can you tell us a little bit about that? Man, Man Saturday, I got the call from Comedy Hype. They want me to come through and headline their show. I'm coming. I think it's a festival that weekend yeah, as well. It is. It's like a festival around here. So we're going to wrap up the festival with a good lineup of comedians. I think uh, Marcus is hosting yeah. from Chicago, a young comedian. we got Osonji, uh, a comedian from Atlanta. We're going to have a good time, man. I'm headlining. You're going to get these jokes. You're going to get some pre-written stuff. You're going to get some naturally funny stuff. And, you know, I might talk about somebody in the crowd. You just never know. Symphony going to pull up. She said she's going to do some time. Well, oh, don't do that. Don't tell him that. We're going to get her on stage, man. I'm going to bring my kids, too. Because it's a month, a father's month. Bring them to work with. There you go. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Well, as always, B Tuck, thank you for joining us. How can people keep up with everything that you have going on on social media? Oh, man, you can follow me at B Tuck Comedy or you can go to my website, btuckcomedy.com. Look at all my shows that's coming up. I got some pictures, some videos, YouTube. Man, you can just Google B Tuck Comedy. It's going to come up. Absolutely. Now, I want everybody to, to flood Danielle's Instagram with why she should be watching Everybody Hates Chris. Danielle, how can everybody follow you on social media? She, she ain't got Y'all don't listen. Y'all don't listen. She don't listen. She didn't show her age. She, she didn't need to give us her phone, phone number. Man, Danielle, we're going we gonna to sit you down, tie you to a chair, and make you watch this. How can people follow you on social media, Danielle? Because I want them to flood you. I do. Don't do that. Y'all don't do that. Don't listen to Symphony this time. Don't, don't do that. You can flood me and ask me about recommendations for the Bahamas because that's where I am here in the Bahamas, Nassau Bahamas. And then of course we have other islands. There's Luther, there's Exuma. You love a ball here. It's a big playground. You can follow me on Instagram at D-E-E-A Miller. And then on Facebook at Danielle, D-E-N-I-E-L-L-E. -E -L -L -E. And then YouTube is the same thing. And that's it. You ask me what I have going on, I just hope people could follow me because you throw me off with flooding my Instagram with that question. We're going to flood. We flood you and flood it with your favorite episode of Everybody Hates Chris. Like, really get in those comments because, Danielle, we're going to help you out. Don't worry about it. We are here to help you. Again, thank you so much, Danielle, for chiming in and VTUC for joining me as well. You heard from us. Now, we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the reboot of Chris Rocks? Everybody still hates Chris. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Put it in the comments. Don't flood my time. And in her Instagram. Instagram. It's going to go down in the DM. <laughs> <laughs>